Uh, okay, thank you very much for this opportunity. So what I'm, what this presentation is about, it's it's about a bit where it's something very different and something very outside the box. So what I'm trying to do in past year that to understand how we can define spatial data quality specifically for OpenStreetMap because there are a lot, a lot of definitions that are quite authoritative and they cannot be, sometimes they cannot be really useful for OpenStreetMap, specifically for the data in the Global South and there's this data inequality in the Global South as well. That's also it's one of the reasons that is there is a data inequality with respect to OpenStreetMap and yeah. So let's go through some definitions that was already there by ISO and TC211. One of them that say accuracy of the time measurement, temporal validity, temporal consistency, rate of change, and temporal lapse. These definitions are mainly uh, related to authoritative data or very high quality data that is already very high quality data. But in many times, the, the opposite map data does not really follow these patterns because of unavailability of authoritative data for Global South. So my I hypothesized is that we need a different way of looking things when it comes to OpenStreetMap, specifically data for Global South. So I take two example from uh, Haiti and Enschede. Enschede is in the, in the city in the Netherlands. Uh, so I checked uh, the historical data, the how, how the data was added and how much buildings were added. I took only buildings. So if we see here, we see a sudden increase of the data that has been added to OpenStreetMap. And then there is again in 2017. So these two data was added because of the earthquake and because there was a project and there was a hurry that we should add data. My, my inquiry is that why the data has not been added in these years, because they should be added before to have a better preparedness for disasters, for any event, and to, to have better aid and better response opportunity. So I wanted to know why the data was not added, whether it was because of satellite imagery and, well, whether the data should be added there. And then I compare now with Enschede. Enschede, the data was really two jumps. These two jumps is easily explained by the availability of uh, satellite imagery and and, uh, and the connection between the authoritative uh, data from the municipality towards the Enschede, which is the global north, which is things are pretty equal with respect to data in opposite map. So now well, what definitions we uh, read and now how I have hypothesized is that we should look at con contextual and regional variables and urban urban change agents and to see i want to see whether there is quantification we can define that whether the contextual and region variable has some effect on the, on on the temporal quality of the open street map and whether we could say that yeah at this moment in time in 10 years we need to add data or after one month we need to add data what are the contextual and regional variables variable valid here for the different regions. So to put into words, to constitute OSM data as analysis ready, which is that at certain moment in time, we can do certain analysis, for example, risk mapping. I think it's important to consider these change agents and contextual and regional variables that are, that governs uh, the change in the region. So what I'm trying to do is to connect the contexts, context, different urban contexts with the specific data quality, whether there is a con there is a relationship or is it realistic, a relationship would be a realistic relationship or not. So this is a really a small part of a bigger research vision that I am envisioning, which is called OSM Utopia, and which I am trying to basically understand that different regional urban changes and different regional contexts have relationship with spatial data quality or not, and how much and to what extent, and to which inductive questions we could really ask. And I would be also presenting in force 4 g Netherlands and to dig, dig deep into that. So please uh, reach out to me. Uh, I am currently working alone here uh, with this bigger research vision. Please reach out and yeah, also I, 
today I got a right uh, green light that I can open my OpenGIS research lab here in the Netherlands, uh, just a remote lab. And I did quite a, a lot of hard work to get there because I left one of the jobs that was in my field uh, to, because there was a conflict of interest and can I, I cannot open my research lab and I accepted another job to open this research lab. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a nice evening. Thank you. If you have a question, please reach out. I would really like that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Salim, uh, for the great presentation. And uh, without further ado, we are going to be moving to our next session. And please, everyone, uh, please reach out uh, and uh, reach out to Salim uh, with the details that he has provided. Thanks. Okay. In our next, sec next section, um, we are joined by um, uh, Alina Bloom, um, who's going to be talking about uh, the open source seagrass and blue carbon mapping in support of the National